from Reggie's Bar at Concordia University, you're watching See You Now. Today, we'll get close with Egyptian Canadian protesters as they fight for democracy. Hook up with some hipsters at Exposine. And laugh at people with disabilities. Hello there, I'm Anna Haywood. And I'm Adrian Sousa, and this is Concordia's downtown news and culture magazine, See You Now. Many of us will go out on the town tonight, some right here at Reggie's. But lately, dedicated Egyptian activists have better things to do. With violence escalating back home, Montreal's Egyptian community have rallied together in a series of demonstrations and protests. Let's join Nadine Shaker at Atrium de la Gauchitaire with the story. In Egypt, they're called the silent majority. Abroad, they're given the epithet of silent expats. Their contributions to the Egyptian revolution, however, have not been little, and they've started here at the Ventro Bonaventure. Under the glimmering lights, Iman Sultan is often leading the chants calling for the fall of the military council in Egypt. Iman is a Canadian Egyptian, carrying the Egyptian revolution to Montreal. Following a week of military crackdown back home, Iman and other Egyptian activists decided to take to the streets in a full day of protest. Last Saturday, Egyptians in Montreal marched from the corner of Guy and Maisonneuve to the Egyptian embassy at Bonaventure. They chanted about the military council's heavy-handed and violent rule in Egypt. Activist Mohammed Abdel Hakim is enraged about their actions. It's the 11th of February, we see just a continuation of Mubarak regime. Protests have once again raged in Egypt, leaving an estimated 40 people dead. The military tried to roust night campers out of Tahrir Square. This escalated into clashes that carried throughout the week. Iman fears that the military will never be able to remove themselves from politics. But things were moving fast, and parliamentary elections were on the horizon. After the protest, demonstrators moved into the atrium to cast their votes in a makeshift poll. The same group of people continue to hold rallies every night at the same place, called for by the Egyptian Association of Montreal. It also answers to accusations made towards Egyptians abroad, accusations that go as far as questioning their patriotism. The take-home message is that the Egyptian revolution will have a place in Montreal, right here on this stepping stone. Here in Montreal, Nadine Shaker. With mainstream print publications on the decline, alternative press is filling in the gaps. Mega popular Expose Montreal gives exposure to Montrealers and beyond. Let's join Nick Matheson on scene to find out what all the fuss is about. Exposine is in full swing here at the saint alvin jesus Church in Montreal's Plateau neighborhood. Local independent artists are showing off their work, trying to get their small publications some exposure. A zine, for the uninitiated, is a small, self-published work, often only distributed by the artists themselves. Every year, artists and writers from across Quebec gather to sell their zines and do a little networking. As Montreal's largest alternative press exposition, Exposine encourages zine writers to meet their public directly. Jonathan Hemsworth has had a booth every year since 2006. Well, it's a media entry point. It's a media entry point. And the other thing is, we're meeting the people that are, are actually... It's, it's a really beautiful thing to actually meet the person who wants to personally buy off you. And that's a beautiful exchange. This year marks the event's 10th anniversary, and so far, it's the largest one yet. Billy Mavreas, one of the founders of Exposine, says that the expo was started to showcase homegrown talent without the artists having to leave Montreal. Well, we knew that there was a lot of talent in Montreal. We were also tired of driving to Toronto and paying gas and uh, Taco Bell prices to show our stuff there when we knew that our city was saturated with culture. Expo Zine Montreal is Canada's largest zine fair, and it's only getting bigger. The applicants this year have outnumbered the 300-plus booths, and the organizers have been making even bigger plans for next year's Expo Zine. For See You Now, this is Nick Matthews. Fighting the starving artist stereotype, Youth Employment Services Montreal is celebrating the business of art and the art of business at its second annual YES Art Expo. Giselle McDonald was there to paint us a picture. 
Hey guys, I'm here at the Yes Art Expo where over 60 young Quebec artists are displaying and selling their artwork. Earlier this afternoon, I had the pleasure of hanging out with Damian Siqueiros, one of the featured artists. We got to talk about what inspires him and how Yes has helped him achieve commercial success. They have helped me less as an artist, more as a businessman. Um, there's a slight difference because, I mean, they don't try to change the kind of style or artist that you are because I think that's, uh, that's where you have to grow by yourself or ask another artist to, to help you. But I think what is most important and for many artists is very helpful is to develop your marketing tools, um, to know how to promote yourself and how to get your work out there. From his studio in Verdun, Siqueiros produces photography that portrays not only beauty, but social consciousness. One of the things that I love the most, it's the transformative uh, capabilities of, of art. Um, art makes you see things differently. YES is a non-profit organization that helps young Quebecers to find employment or start businesses. It provides them with resources and counseling to help them achieve their goals. Iris Unger is the executive director of YES Montreal. Through her work, she has helped create opportunities for hundreds of local artists. Um, we recognize that we have a lot of extensive networks, and so we thought, and we have a, an artist program here at YES where we help artists with their business skills, and we thought what better way to help them than to give them practical experience of selling their art and giving them the skills um, to sell their art. The event was held at Marché Bon Secours in the heart of Old Montreal. Over a thousand people were there to mingle with the artists and admire their work. So far I've been having a great time. I've seen visual artists, photographers, sculptors, musicians, you name it. And over and over they've all made it clear that this is a very valuable opportunity and they are grateful to YES for organizing this expo. For See You Now, this is Giselle McDonald. Being handicapped or disabled is not something to laugh about, but there will be an exception on Saturday, December 3rd. Three disabled comedians will be putting on a stand-up show called Merry Christmas to raise some awareness. Laughter brings us all together. December 3rd is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. The three tenors of disabled comedy will be doing a stand-up comedy show called Merry Christmas to help raise awareness. I spoke to Lifshitz, who is also the organizer of the event. He chatted about the significance of the show. Uh, the show is basically to uh, create awareness uh, about people with disabilities. Uh, and to encourage their full inclusion in society. So it's actually been a project we've been working on uh, for over a year now that uh, myself, Andrea Ruda, and Alan Shane, or as we call ourselves, the three tenors of uh, disabled comedy, uh, that we would do a show together. Uh, and uh, the UN International Day of People with Disabilities seemed like a good opportunity to do our first uh, show. Lifshitz was born with a condition called multiple congenital musculoskeletal abnormalities. Alan Shane has cerebral palsy. Andre H. Ruda refers to himself as an anti-giant. They all incorporate their disabilities in their comedy. Richard Mullen is the host of the show. He's a diabetic. He spoke to me about the choice of venue. Well, I always tried to get into Concordia and I couldn't because I didn't have the marks. See, usually people say that about McGill. Uh, I went to the University of uh, Baseball, south of the border, and you know, it's accessible, and it's a place where education is supposed to happen, so it's the best of both worlds. So we'll hopefully have some young students there, and we'll be able to get to uh, educate them on what's going on, and they could have a good time. The event will take place on the seventh floor of the Hall building. An evening of crippling laughter is to be expected. For See You Now, this is Mark Sumako signing off. Back to you. Movember, the month formerly known as November, has come to a close. And Canadians have raised over $30 million for prostate cancer. Let's hear from Emily Campbell about why she loves the most. I love Movember. It's the time of year when all the bros turn into Mo Bros, and they walk around looking like hipsters perverts, or cowboys in order to raise money for prostate cancer research. This is important because one in six men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer, but 90% of those diagnoses can be cured if it's caught early enough. Statistically, men don't like going to the doctor, and there's a stigma that comes with getting tested. 
but now, during the month of November, there's over a million walking, talking billboards raising awareness for the issue. Some people can't stand it though, and hipsters everywhere are losing their identity as ironic alternatives. A few weeks ago, an opinions article came out in the link that called prostate cancer the cancer of the privileged and said that there are a million more charities more worthwhile than sponsoring your local douchebag to grow a crumb catcher. But the next week, both the writer and his editor published an apology because they were wrong. Chances are you or someone you know is going to be affected by prostate cancer. And that's why Movember's the time to set aside your pride and grow a stash for some cash. This is Emily Campbell for See You Now. That's all for today on See You Now. I'm Adrian Sousa. And I'm Anna Haywood. And we'll see you later.